another milestone event for your trip is that uh, Nauru has officially joined China's uh, Belt and Road Initiative and uh, this uh, cooperation documents was signed under uh, witness by President Xi and also you. So how would you interpret the significance for Nauru to join this initiative which was proposed by President Xi? What kind of development opportunities do you look forward to see and what might be some of the potential areas for future cooperation between the two countries? Uh, our economy is uh, very small. We depend mostly on our fishery sector and the extraction and export of phosphate revenues. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we need to invest in these more uh, and also perhaps more also in tourism so that we can uh, get better economic diversification to get improved economic and financial stability. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that, that can add to the infrastructure that promotes uh, economic diversification can only be to the interest of our economic and financial stability. Another important area for both countries to make joint efforts on is uh, tackling climate change. Given that Nauru is a Pacific island facing severe challenges of uh, average uh, temperature increase as well as uh, sea level rise, so what is your outlook on the cooperation between the two countries on that front? We think um, uh, China has a lot of uh, experience with um, addressing these. Um, we, uh, by, by July, will be 45% um, renewable energy mm -hmm. thanks to a project that a uh, Chinese uh, company is building, uh, our solar farm. Yes, uh, we want to the photovoltaic. We recently visited um, uh, a site in Xi'an where yes. they are the leaders in photovoltaic uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with, uh, with that and with the support of the government of China, we can improve our, our renewable energy to more than 45%. But also, um, because of, clim of climate change and sea level rise, uh, our coast needs to be better protected. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can also get some technical assistance to address that. But uh, and also, a very important um, idea for us is to move our people from the coast and move them to a higher part of the island mm -hmm. uh, to escape the ravages of the ocean that be and, and sea level rise. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very major project to be relocating uh, perhaps 75% of the population over time. This will not happen overnight, right. but with the support and the assistance of the government of China, I think it, it can be feasibly done. You are a seasoned uh, politician in Nauru and you have served multiple roles in government and you were one of the youngest member in the parliament for many years I I'm heard. I'm very impressed by you. <laughs> so what vision do you have for the future of the country? You know if if we can get just a small fraction of the capacities and the technologies and the systems that uh, is potentially available from China we can easily transform a tiny country from Nauru, uh, from what it is, to a beacon of, I would say, of what progress and development should be in the Pacific, if not the world. We are trying to do that uh, very fast. Uh, we have a team, we have a Chinese team in Nauru already, working with our officials as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, the day I left, uh, they, they were arriving in Nauru uh, to work with our officials on what uh, projects we can work on in order to deliver what your president says should be early harvest of our bilateral relationship. Mm -hmm. And of course there will be early harvest and not so early harvest and future harvests.